Hey guys, Frank here, your virtual general aviation aviator, and today I am in the Epic E1000, and I'm just kind of sitting here trying to decide what type of flight I want to make, whether I want to go do an IFR flight from, uh, I'm at Chattanooga, Tennessee, you can see the mountains in the background. Uh, and my plan, kind of, sort of, is to fly the Epic IFR from Chattanooga to Charlotte. Uh, which should be a relatively short flight. Now, I have not done any pre-flight or any thinking about this flight other than one destination to the next. So, excuse me. So, the decision is whether or not I want to fly this IFR or VFR. Now, um, it's not unusual to fly prop planes VFR, even though this is one that's probably rarely flown VFR in real life. Um, anyway, um, and the other thing that I'm kind of mulling through is whether or not to do a four interactive checklist um, since I do have the checklister program for this aircraft installed and let's see that one's not gonna be persistent uh, checklister where are you X checklist open checklist there we go and so, you know, it just depends on how quickly I want to make this flight. Um, and as you guys know, I'm not one to do short videos. So let me get started. And with no clear direction in mind, I'm just going to make a flight, you know. Um, <laughs> I got to figure out whether I want to work. I have fun. And let's do a combination of both. Let's do a little work and a lot of fun. All right, so uh, I like that this checklist I have the uh, some information on V on my V refs here, and I think it's important to know what your best glide is, uh, which is the last thing on this V ref chart. Um, because I have lost engines and didn't know what my best glass were. And that's, uh, that's pretty important if you want to sit down somewhere where you, if you want to get the best performance out of an engine loss, shall I say. All right, so uh, see what those are not and just kind of looking at them um, what's important is to be able to get back here really quickly but the ones that I want to to probably have memorized is these here um, initial climb 120 knots indicated crew uh, clam cruise uh, between 160 and 200 knots. Best cruise, 175 knots at flight level of 34,000 or flight level of 340. Um, and best glide, 135 knots indicated. All right, so, so let's go ahead and do a pre-flight. And I am going to... Well, my first inclination is to start skipping stuff. <laughs> All right, so let's not skip stuff. All right, door open, let's see. And let's open the door. Um, okay, door's open. Yep, yep, all right, door's open. Um, get the luggage and 
I stained that and want to uh, don't mean, didn't mean to close the door or it didn't didn't take that all right that's not clickable why is that in front previous door there we go uh, fuel is necessary and I think well, I'm going to Charlotte how far is Charlotte? Let's pull up some information and look for Charlotte. So, excuse me while I pull up Sky Vector in another browser here. Okay. And now that I've got Sky Vector pulled up. Let me just pull it over so I can share it with you guys. And let's get rid of this. So, K, Chattanooga. It's Lavelle Field to Charlotte. And I was going to initially go to RDU, but I changed my mind because RDU was such a long flight for the epic I was going to fly the Phenom 3, 300 but for some reason I can't get it to load today uh, it keep crashing the desktop so that's something that I got to go back and, and investigate alright so So let's uh, uh I was wondering why this was taking thirty four hundred miles to <laughs> get rid of all these waypoints. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. All right, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. All right. And looks like this is almost due east. Uh with a little north twinge to it. Um, so, 085s basically um, would be, look like it might be a desired track. All right, so it's 209 nautical miles as the crow fly, and if I was flying the 172, it would take me a hour and 53 minutes. Um, this bird right here, let's change our speed to 180. And let's do a flight level of, um, we'll do VFR, let's say if we were to do VFR at um, 17, let's see, this is odd, 17.5. then it would take just a note just over an hour you guys got an hour <laughs> you guys got an hour to spend with me um, as you know it going through the interactive checklist that's going to take an hour by itself all right so we're looking at roughly about two hours um, to make this to get wheels down in charlotte from this flight Let's just see what would happen if I want to go to KRDU and hmm, that's not too much longer. You guys want to go to KRDU? Um, I guess you can't tell me because this video is just being recorded. But uh, yeah, let's go to KRDU. All right. It's only, um, it's only, well, it's a little bit longer. Um, if I can bump up to 200 knots, then it's just over an hour and a half. Hmm. Charlotte or KRDU? Um, I tell you what, we'll go to KRDU in Charlotte would be our alternate that 
no, Greensboro is the alternate. This is Greensboro here, anyway. Uh, so let's get. Um, So if we were to follow an IFR flight plan, this would kind of be it. Um, yeah, so let's just use it and we'll just fly it VFR. That, does that work for you guys? All right, so let's get back in the aircraft. Um, and let's put extra fuel in. Now what I'm not seeing is the weight and balance, but so it's hard to know, even though um, my, my weight is, is within the, is within the, the max mass, my weight is up under my maximum weight. I don't know what my window look like. Let's see. What my 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 weight and balance envelope look like. And I'm just wondering see, if it's if that weight and balance envelope is if I can see it here. So let's take a look speak. Or a gander. Whichever you prefer. And and well, it looks like I'd be all right. Now I'm actually getting more information from this weight and balance because I see my flight time is three hours. I, I'm carrying three hours and thirty-four minutes of fuel, given the payload that I have. Now. Let me check something. Like I said, this is going to be a long video because this is Sunday and I'm not doing anything else. All right, so I got 806 pounds, right? So, and I just want to see something. So let me add um, 60 kilos, uh, 120 pounds of, um, of luggage. Ah, hit cancel. Oh, that's the door. <laughs> All right, let's open the door back up. All right, and now let's go back to that weight and balance and see if, yeah, so the payload did change. Okay, so that's cool. That's cool. I just wanted to double check that. Um, I figured it would, but I never really looked. All right, so we got plenty of fuel. Uh, we got a co-pilot, left, left seat passenger. Right seat passenger. Of course, I'm in the right seat. I mean, I'm in the left seat cockpit chair. Um, and no kids. And 120 pounds of, of cargo or 60 kilos. All right, close door. All right, so we, we go ahead and close our door because we got everybody um, loaded up, get rid of our static elements, and we are done with this one, all right? All right, so fuel look good. Flags, all that is removed, no GPU. We're gonna do a battery start in a cockpit and close the door. All right, we can do that and the door is closed and clock take time and i guess we have to take time on our on our watch because we don't have any power on for avionics yet okay all right landing gear let's check okay landing gear is down flaps Flaps are up. Hmm. 
let me just go back and see if I missed something that said no I just want to go back and see make sure that I didn't that I didn't uh, miss anything that said that said um, turn the battery on temporarily okay so I didn't see anything like that all right so uh, landing gear is down flaps up up this is my flap indicator condition okay let me now I do have the alpha yoke let me put this guy on so that I can control my prop my prop because this guy is not fully FedEx okay parking brakes are set parking brakes are set And my flaps are set to take off. They need to be up. Yeah. All right. And all switches should be off. And I'm just looking at my alpha yoke. All switches are off. All switches are off here. All right. So I'm good cabin oxygen valve and I'm not sure where that cabin oxygen valve is at um, this is what I would wish I could do when I'm when I'm using the flight the Microsoft flight sim um, I can't really make really get flights in that flight sim because I, I don't I can't use the hat button like I can here um, okay so I have to fly this some more to make sure that I can find stuff like that oxygen valve. I, if I were to slow down and, oh there it is, cabin oxygen. And that should be closed. And it is, okay, good deal. Uh, air conditioning all off, yep. Circuit breakers. Uh, looking good, looking good, all right. And pushed. And if GPU is off, then battery one and two can come on. All right, one and two. And door, door is, I don't have the door open, warning, okay. So that looked good. And fuel quantity. Three quarters looking good. ATC. I uh, decided that I do a VFR and battery one and two can go off. All right. Now before engine start, let's make sure that all of this is in the right. And I need to put the condition level on also. All right. I don't know how I missed that. All right, so that can come down to idle uh, and shut off. Power levels idle is prop is feathered. And this is feathered, okay. Condition levels cut off. Batteries one and two at this point can come, can go on. one two and i can have this automatically check um 
advance. Let me go to settings and fix that. Uh, I don't see, I didn't see settings load up. So, I did a, okay, plug in, X check this. Maybe I hit save settings, open setup. All right, auto hide, show GUI, uh, show checklist if it exists, turn copilot on. All right, there we go, save settings. All right, so I think it's the copilot that does that. All right, um, Aviance Master. And there's my Avian master. See how that automatically checked off? That's what I wanted. And if, generally speaking, the way this checklist will work, generally speaking, there are exceptions. If there's a plus here, that means it automatically advance. If there's not a plus there, then that means I have to check it off manually. Generally speaking, uh, okay, G1000 AOA panel adjust and spot. Now this one, um, I don't think it's going to check off, um, but um, G1000 and spot brightness. Yeah, well, I think the um, I think it's bright enough for me. But what I'm looking for are the controls to change the bright uh, to change the brightness on it just in case I don't have any controls up up top or any controls on the left or right armrest all right so I keep that in mind and get more uh, fuses here that I didn't look at. Okay. Um, so I am looking. This is my Garmin. Wouldn't be there. Okay. Here we go. Uh, nope, that's not it either. Um, AOA panel adjust and soft brightness. G1000. I don't. Yeah, I'm. Oh, here we go. This is it. This is what they're talking about. Right over here. So, yeah. So, so just by touching it, that that did check that off. All right, voltage should be. Um, I need my voltage to be greater than 23 volts and I'm actually uh, using the battery I'm um, I'm gonna check that off manually um, it's a little bit low test enunciators all right so let me back out here and where is my enunciator test button? That's the um, that's the thing with with jumping from aircraft to aircraft. I tell you, there's a guy named Melvin Leroy. Uh, he's a Twitch. Uh, he makes a lot. He does a lot of videos on Twitch. And then he put um, clips on YouTube, but that guy is good. I mean, he can fly anything from your C-152 to the DC-3 and everything in between, um, uh, heavy, and he can fly him like a champ. Uh, that guy is impressive to me, and he is... Uh, so down to earth, he's just got this common voice. Um, so, if 
if you want to follow a great sim palette, then check out Melvin Leroy on Twitch. Um, in fact, I should do a little bit more on Twitch, but uh, lately I prefer to record than stream. Uh, anyway, I digress. Okay, test annunciators. Where is my annunciator button? All right, so sometimes you just get to look through this stuff and here we go, test. All right, now annunciators look good. And stuff, you see how it went to the next page? It automatically, previous. Um, well, I was at the last thing, so it's supposed to go to the next page. All right. So if I was in Europe, then I would request an engine start, but I'm not there, so I'm okay to go ahead and and check this off. And you see how this does not have the plus. All right. The beacon light comes on. Fuel selector is on left because that checked off automatically. Uh, turn that fuel pump on. And that would be over here. And I'm gonna turn both of them on. Um, fear of pressure is greater than 14. Uh, let's see how. Let's see where we can get our fear of pressure from. So let's go to system. And uh, I hate reset fuel, but that's fine. Uh, fear of pressure is actually 23 so I'm good there right uh, feel select right and and that should be greater than 14 so I have to hit this again right is that right is that what I want to do uh, Actually, yeah, yeah, so, uh, I can't tell whether, all right, whether I'm on that left or right tank, but, uh, this should, should check off automatically, so something is a, is a little low on this fear of pressure, um, System, but unless I'm gonna fly this plane and get fully checked out in it, I'm not gonna spend any extra time on it right now. All right, right for your pump. I said I didn't need to turn the right for your pump on at that point, but I did. Uh, right for your pump. Feel select the left. Um, and. I got to keep in mind which not to turn this backwards and turn off my fear while I'm in flight. All right, so, so I'm back on my left tank and now it's time to start the aircraft. Um, all right, so if engine area is clear, then let's see, get out here and Come up here and and clear left and clear right and press engine start. And I need to be able to to see what I'm pressing here. All right, so. Go ahead and turn my. Now this is kind of funky because it says press start, which would be here, and then after I get to a certain point, then I want to go back up here and press the generator and. And I'm gonna I'm swing to next. See now, here it tells me to turn my igniter off, 
and everything that I checked off when I go back is going to be undone. So that's par for the course. Um, oh, okay. Okay, at 9%, turn that NIDA on. Check the oil pressure at 15%, go to ground idle, and, and then turn my starter generator on. My modus operandi for starting this aircraft was simply going left to right. So I'd go ahead and, and this is what I had been doing. Start my generator, then I turn my NIDA on, hit my start button wait till I get to 15% on the NG, give it, introduce fuel, and wait for a good start. Uh, so I am going to try it their way, all right? Uh, the right way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the right way, right? <laughs> all right. So uh, start. And I want NG at 9%. Once I get to 9%, then I want to turn my miter on. So that's 8, 9, all right. A miter can come on, and 15%, I can introduce fuel. NG is coming up. Where's my oil pressure? Oil pressure is moving towards green, 15%. And start my ITT and my 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 starter generator and okay technically my this would have been a hot a to me a hot start um, and I would have shut it down because it stayed in the red I think far too long okay. And okay, check the ITT is greater than 292 degrees. It is. Um, NG is greater than 51%. And PSI is greater than, I mean, oil pressure is greater than 60 PSI. And oil pressure is, is at 33. Oh, okay, here's oil pressure here. Oil pressure is at 99 PSI. And now I can turn my NIDA off. Engine parameters all should be green. Um, torque is green. MP is not except MP, so I'm good there. ITT is green, NG is green, or or P or pressure is green, or temperature is green, amps is green, fuel is green, so all is green, so I'm good there. And let's turn on our pusher and autopilot on. Uh, let's see, okay, so let's turn on our autopilot. Um, so, so that's our autopilot is on. And check our trim. All right, so Ella, uh, let's see, autopilot on. Let's try that again. AP. Okay, so that's the wrong autopilot. I think this is the, <laughs> I think we're looking for something down here, autopilot. This is what we're looking for. And then the trim button. All right, and then the air pressure. All right, so that seals our door so that we can get we don't have to work. We can go up into the flight levels and not pass out. And our nav lights can come on. Air conditioner can come on. And we can set it where we want it. Um, transponder can come on.
And I think I saw standby, right? Transponder on and dial. Um, let's go back here. And what are we, we doing? Let's see if I get back VFR. And that's not checking off by itself. And so now I gotta. Okay, I think this is an ident button here. Uh, I should keep that in mind. So if I have to add dent, I don't have to fidget with these buttons. All right. So let's try standby. Nope, that didn't work. On. Okay, so they want transponder and on. They, they got in dial. But when I hit on, that checked it off. Okay, head and book. Um, align to runway. I don't know what runway I'm going to use yet. So now it's time to figure that out, right? So what I need to do is go, and I'm talking. Oh, man. Wow. There we go. Okay. So I'm talking my way completely through this uh, airport diagram. Let's use that. Okay, ADOS is 119.85. So let's dial that in. Uh, uh, 85. And 119. And let's dial that in and then go to COM2. COM2 is down. Level field information, Quebec. Quebec. 1600 Zulu weather. Wind calm. Visibility more than 10. Sky clear. Temperature 22. Dew point 20. Altimeter 3012. Arriving runway 02. Departing runway 02. Advise on initial contact you have, Quebec. Okay, so I got Quebec and winds are calm. In fact, I should listen to that again because I don't have my real my real weather on. So let me turn that on right quick. Or, or maybe even not right quick, but for whatever it takes. Uh, let's see. So let's go here, here, that's, that's global weather, that's gonna, we wanna start that guy, and that's gonna need to, well, to download dynamic weather, continue, and I know you guys can't see this, uh, let's see, so it should be downloading the weather that I want. And, and now that that's downloaded, I can transfer it to the sim. Okay. Now it's probably on, on, it may, it may be on real weather anyway. So, yes, so it's not on real weather, so it, the weather could really change up. So let me get weather one more time and make sure I got something to make notes on. Uh, got my knee pad. make sure that it's set okay it's set and let's listen one more time guys um, come to level field information Quebec. Quebec 1600 Zulu weather wind light and variable light and visibility variable. more than 10 sky conditions 2500 few 4500 scattered 25,000 broken, temperature 29, 
2.20 Altimeter 3012 Arriving runway 15 Departing runway 15 Advise on initial contact you have Quebec so Quebec did change significantly. All right, so winds are light and variable and, and we're using one five. So let's see if we can't see what one, oh yeah. Um, you know what, I, I should have. Uh, forget, there we go. I should have did a, um, an IFR flight because I forgot, I, I did get a, I am, Playing around with um, at least for a month with uh, Navigraph, and I just I want to see what Navigraph did. Let's see. Uh, and I don't have my designations on this map. Uh, let's see. So, um, I don't have my runway designations on it. And but so do I see my aircraft? Where am I? I uh, don't see my aircraft either but I sh oh yeah here I am I do see my aircraft all right so now I can look at the um, the chart and find out where one five is at and I see one five and now I show you where one five this is one five here I am here so I'm gonna taxi here cross one way runway let's see I guess the easiest way to get there would be to cross right here and go up here cross one five and come on up here all right so let's see what ATC if ATC wanted me to do that how would I do that all right so there in lot um well, the in lie the question. So what I want to do is I want to make a left on Foxtrot, a right on hotel, cross ho short ho short at one five and cross one one five left on Delta and and hold short at one five for take for takeoff. Okay. So anyway, so now that I got that done, okay, head and bug set to runway and we're gonna so I want heading book set to one five. Heading, where's heading? Here's heading way over here. And let's put that on one five. All right. Our timida is gonna be set to three zero one two. Check and where's my backup altimeter? I should have a backup somewhere. Three zero one two. And let me zoom in so you can see these numbers. Um, okay. And that the the MD three oh two is the backup here. Okay, um in a flight plan. Now this is where it takes 
more time than I, I like for it to. Okay, flight plan. Flight plan, okay. And let me pull up the plan. So, let's bear with me. I forgot to get back out the sky vector and get the plan. All right, so the plan is to is to do CRAN. And I don't think the the keypad works, at least in the effort. I haven't been able to get it to work. Um, yeah, so let's just not worry about that. Uh, maybe I need to be here. Um, yeah, I need to be there. But then I have to liter literally come over here, uh, move to the next. So it's not, it doesn't do the auto advance. So um, I do remember that C is CRAN, C-R-A-N, uh, Romeo Alpha November Delta. Okay, so Romeo, where's Romeo? Romeo. Uh, Alpha. November and Delta. Okay, so there's Delta and then enter twice. All right, that's 17 nautical miles. And then I want a, I want a, um, a Victor. And I think I remember how to, see, do I remember how to put the Victor in? Uh, proceed. I think it was menu. No, nope. I think it is menu, but I need to be in a different mode. All right, clear. And let me go here. Let me try menu again. Low airway. Enter. And get the 5 4. There we go. Enter, and we're going to transition off at locus. So we're looking for locus. There's locus. All right. Enter, and enter again. All right. And then, um, okay, clear, 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 all right. And then we want uh, Victor 54, okay, that is 54, and then we want Victor 409. All right, so how do we get Victor 409 in here? Let's try the same thing, uh, menu. Lower airway. Enter. If, no, that didn't that didn't give us four nine. Uh, clear. Uh, clear. All right. So let's try moving to the uh, clear. So let's try in, entering that. All right. Let's try. moving down to the bottom of this. Wow, got Charlotte. Got the Charlotte waypoint already in there. How about that? Okay, locus. Oh, okay. Alright, there's locus. I'm not following, but I am going to put... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what we... Yeah, then I take Victor full nine. 
because I'm going to Raleigh, Durham. Ah, I'm thinking I'm going to Charlotte. <laughs> All right, so um, now I think this is where I can put in full nine. So let's go to menu, low airway, and we got a Victor full nine. Enter, enter, enter. Full nine, there she go. Enter. And we're gonna exit at Gus's. And I don't see a Gus's. There it is. Enter. Okay. Enter again. And then we can put in our destination. Um, which is KRDU. Let's get to the bottom of this. K, uh, enter. K. R. Delta. In uniform. Enter. And this is our flight plan. So we got um, we got that. And of course, at this point, I could pull out charts and set up some vertical nails. Um, let's see, so I think that's what I would do if I want to set up vertical nails. Um, let's see where we want to be at, at uh, Liberty. So this would be the Gus's arrival, I do believe. So. So let's go over here. Uh, let's go over here. And let's drag this back over here so I can share it with you guys. And And I really should do my fourth flight too. In fact, I'm, what I really should do, oh man, my camera crashed again. All right, so I'm just gonna turn the webcam off. I'm not sure what's going on with it. Um, I think that hub that I got it connected to is misbehaving. All right, so anyway, um, I got distracted. Where was I? Anyway, oh yeah, we was gonna see if Gus's was a uh, an arrival. Yeah, we're gonna see if Gus's is an arrival. And and let's see, so Raleigh uh, Durham. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, Robert Dumb. And throw that down. Let's see. Instrument approach. Standard terminal arrival. And I don't see a Gus's for Robert Dumb. Yes, I don't see what does or uh, not. Yeah, I don't see. So anyway, once we get the gusses, then we will transition to an approach. Um, or even actually before gusses, we'll figure it out. Okay. So let's go. 
back to here. And we've got our flight plan entered. Flight director can come on. And let's adjust our trims. Okay, so that's that takeoff. Everything else is neutral. Put that okay, and now I'm gonna bring it back to take off. Maybe somewhere else in this, in this, it will have me bring it to neutral. Okay, this is before taxi. Okay, condition level should be at flight. Now, I normally taxi with condition level at flight idle. Prop. I said, what is it saying about prop? Propeller max RPM. What is, what are they talking about? Oh, 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 we're talking about this. All right, so, so this can go to max RPM. Because it's been feathered. And, and then power adjustment, 900. To a thousand RPM. Okay, got it. And then let's test beta. And actually, I think beta set to reverse rather than beta. I should fix that. You guys. Hold on, let me fix that. Okay, guys, I am back. And I know it only seemed like an instant to you, but um, it's been about an hour for me. Um, I had to work out some stuff that was going wrong. And it looks like I got my webcam working again. And um, so I, and I did work out the beta issue. I did have reverse on when I needed to have, turn the P-TOT heat on and inertia separators open. Uh, let's see, let me show you. Yeah. Um, so I did work out the beta. I did have it set to reverse rather than beta. And um, it's been long enough for me to get new weather, right? So let's go ahead and get new weather. Uh, have um, that dialed in for COM2. Lajo Field Information Sierra. Lajo Field? Zulu weather. Sure, I got the right frequency. Visibility more than 10. Sky conditions 11985. scattered. 6,500 few. 25,000 broken. Temperature 30, 2.18. Altimeter 3009. Arriving runway 02. Departing runway 02. Advise on initial contact you have Sierra. Sierra and winds were calm. Uh, terminal 3009, runway 02. Let me just double check the winds. Lavo Field Information Sierra, 1800 Zulu weather. Wind calm. Calm. Visibility more than 10. Plus 10. Sky conditions 4500 scattered. 6500. Two layers of clouds that we'll go through. Temperature three and we'll zero. stay up under the those okay, so three zero zero yeah. nine. Arriving All right. runway zero two. Departing runway zero two. Yeah, so it looks like we are good to go. Uh, clouds have some clouds have built in since the last time we looked. 
it's been a while <laughs> all right so um, we do have a flight plan in and let's uh, zoom out 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 so yeah, that's as much, well, it's loading, so maybe we can see a little bit more after it continues to load. Yep, so this is our flight plan. Actually, you can probably see it a little better on four flight. So we'll pop it up in four flight. And looks like, looks like we are going to Greenville, so we're gonna be way south of Asheville and in south of Charlotte. Uh, let's see, where is Charlotte? Oh, okay, actually, we're gonna go over Charlotte and we're gonna need to be above 10,000 when we get over Charlotte. Then we're gonna turn northwest and take Victor 409 to Liberty. And at Liberty, uh, let's be at 3100 at Liberty. So let's go ahead and put that in. So hopefully we have um, some descent information. All right, so flight plan. Uh, Enter, scroll down to Liberty. And let's make that 3100. Enter. And blue is true. So, yep. All right. And let's do a 3%. We was on a bit heavy jet then with a bunch of passengers, two and a half might be good, but we can actually go three and a half and still be good. But we'll do a 3% LPA descent feet per, what does LPA stand for? Um, don't rightly know LPA feet per I don't know I have to figure out, find that out good pilot is always learning all right and I do have my best glide here so this chart this chart is probably helpful I never knew it was there I never really looked in anyway let's get out of here guys all right so we've been through all this stuff we actually had gotten to flight director uh, let's see, I did have to turn the aircraft back on so some stuff may have went off um, see, flight director is on why didn't that light up by itself I don't know but it's on and it's not accepting input at the moment um, in front previous our trims let's see flaps are up and I'll double check these trims here yeah, that look okay. All right, so we were at beta power. And, and the last time we checked, beta power went into reverse. Beta mode, yep. Beta is lit. Come out. Yep. All right. 
So, we can request taxi. Get my rudder pedals set up to where they should be. And I need to lift this camera because I did do some playing with it. All right. <laughs> you don't want to see that. All right. And ATC request taxi. Okay, so we're in the ground frequency 121.7 and Lavelle is where we are. And uh, let's just go ahead and use 410 see, 410 uh, Tango, what is L? <laughs> Lima. <laughs> uh, Lavelle ground, Epic 410 Lima Tango is at the ramp. Red the taxi with Sierra. And since we're VFR, they probably want to come back and ask us uh, the direction of departure. And let's see, we are going to be departing to the to the east departing to the east zero lima tango all right and they would give us our taxi instructions Taxi to zero, taxi to runway zero two via Hotel Charlie. Hold short runway zero two. Cross, hold short runway zero two. Alpha, no, no, they wouldn't say it that way. They would say, um, they would say, taxi to runway zero two via Hotel Charlie. Alpha, hold short at Charlie. And I'll repeat that back. Taxi 202 via Hotel Charlie Alpha, hold short at Charlie Lima um, Tango. Zero Lima Tango. Lima Tango. <laughs> All right. You guys get the picture. You get the picture. All right. So taxi lights can come on. And beta power can come on. Release the brakes. And check our brakes. Check our turning indicators. We are moving. And brakes have been tested. All right, go to holding point. All right, looking for a yellow brick road. I didn't clear, didn't do my clear very well before I started. Okay, but they're looking for a yellow brick road. Oh man, I just need to taxi via Alpha. I don't know why I want to cross O2. I think I was going to, I think I was repeating the, the, um, repeating the instructions back for runway 20 rather than runway 02. All right, so just to Alpha to 02, that, that simplifies things. To alpha to 02, um, 410 Lima Tango.
Now, I have a call, I have a custom call sign for this. Well, I try to make up custom call signs for each of the aircraft that I fly. Okay, so let's go to a holding point and we go up here and do a run up. prop where if it pick up any fod then it doesn't blow it into anybody's aircraft all right and then set the brakes all right brakes are set and generate a test generator off and one and generator off, one the light is on, generator back on, beta power off, and power up to 1500 on the RPMs. to 30% don't really know how much is 30% here but and check that the RPM goes down to to a thousand RPM. Do that one more time. Let's see, I don't know how much is 30% here. Because I don't have the detents for 30%. But I'm looking at the NP of the um, of the RPMs. back up. Okay, so that's good. I'm gonna bypass that. Okay, flaps. Bring those all the way down to landing. Make sure it's indicated here, which it is. And, and can't really see them out there, but, but I think they're good. And then back up to to no flaps and we're good okay set the power back to a thousand flight controls free and clear now I don't know why this aircraft is modeled where I only get about 45 degree of deflection on the, on the, but it is what it is. Okay. Um, turn on the igniter and elevator trim to take off. All right. So let's go ahead and, and taxi out to the, to the runway. Now I've, I got my auto select fuel off because I got a indifference in a 
So I want to burn gas right now in my right tank of uh, shoot. Turn that in. And, uh, oh, come on. That's something that I was hoping didn't happen. Okay. Okay, so I want to put get that back on auto as soon as I can bring the fuel quantity back in line so I'm, I need to burn gas on my right tank probably for um, what may be um, 30 minutes 50, 20 minutes and so I don't know um, since I'm gonna take off then it may burn a little bit faster so I just go ahead and start the timer for whatever reason okay uh, elevator trim set that to take off now yeah it does have me move that up to take off all right transponder can go to altitude reporting And then lights can come on. Taxi lights can go off. Strobe lights can come on. Flaps to take off. And first notch and indicated. All right. Autopilot and PF parameters check. All right. So let's do this let's um t -t 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 climb out to 3400 feet on our runway heading all right and runway head need to be changed to to o2 uh let's see so heading and we change that to o2 And and we will get out on the ramp and request takeoff. All right. Beta mode. At least I break. And my dog has a cold or something. He's coughing. Assessment just a minute. And now I'm at 2 2. So something's a miss here because let's see. oh no I'm at two. I think somebody made an error and this should have been a zero. So yeah I'm at I'm good. Besides I'm also using four flight as a cross check and I'm right here. Uh, I don't know if you can see the cursor, but I'm I'm this little blue dot on four flight. Okay, change frequencies here. Lavera Tower, Epic. 410 Lima Tango is at runway 2 ready to depart to the east. Clear for takeoff. 
Lima Tang um, 410 Lima Tango. Alright, so they've cleared me for takeoff. So I can come out of beta. Approaching runway 02. Entered runway 02. 7,300 feet remaining. Lights are configured. I should be in. I should be configured. Headset, okay, fuel one and two is on, right, yep, fuel pumps, one and two is on, fuel selector is on the fullest tank, uh, head and bug, set the runway, yep, so I'm good there, clock, take time, um, I don't know why I would need to do that, but, uh, I know I'm really slow with this stuff. Um, let's see, stop. Re reset. And. And timer. Oh, that's it. Look at the clock and take the time. And where is the clock on this guy? Um. I don't know if I ever. Okay, maybe this is it. 1431, okay? And. Okay, so, yep. Alright. 80% NG and release the brakes. Let's see. Make sure our brakes. Yep, are looking good. Brakes. And torque to 80%. Take off power is set. Rotate. This is an epic. It does have incredible climb capability, but we want to fly runway heading, all right? And then they would give us the departure, and departure with let's let's see three um, one three three four departure. All right, so let's just dial that in.
departure 410 Lima Tango with you at 3400. Continue on course and climb to 15.5 Lima 410 Tango. All right. Continue on course. So that means that we can hit now and we can go to 15.5. Bravo, um, you'll change to get 15 fives. And do what what this airplane likes to do and let's do a let's do a climb so we don't need 4,000 a climb rate of 4,000 um, do 3,500 and we did know we got clouds at 4,000, 4,500, and 6,000. So that should be a layer there. And we should have some more around 6,000. Since they're scattered, then we may or may not hit them because some over there. All right, so after takeoff check, let's brakes. Okay. Landing gear is up. Did we raise our flaps? I believe we did. Landing gear up. That that one. Oh, I guess. Actually, I think we had some flaps in. Um, so let's turn the auto pallet back on. our climb rate okay and landing gear is up flaps are up y'all damper needs to come on Auto fuel select. Let's see where we are on the fuel. Uh, we should be burning fuel on the right. Oh man, we should be burning it on the right tank now. Um, I, should, I knew that was going to happen. The lighter is on. Start. Now, all right, this is going to turn it that way, and this is going to turn it that way. Okay, so, so that lighter can come off now. And our after takeoff checklist is complete. Everything set the auto field selector and I want to balance off my tanks. I'm not sure that the aircraft will balance them uh, automatically. Okay, so we are in the climb and and 70% say climb, torque 100%, right? That's what it says, so we would go up. Four power on this climb. 
with over 10,000 land, landing lights off. And this your separator needs to get closed. P-top heat is acquired. Okay, so all that's green. So yeah, we are looking good. And P-top heat is on. p when I first saw that word, I started calling it P-Talk, which more to P-Talk, <laughs> uh, but I've learned since then that it's actually Pedo, and sometimes I just have a hard time remembering they call it Pedo Heat. Turn the engine sounds down just a little bit. Make sure you guys can hear me okay. Air conditioner adjusts. Okay, so I can turn the engine sounds down a little bit. There we go. Now we don't have all that all that noise. I would have did that on the ground. Alright, so let's see what's going on here with, with my flight plan. Turn us it's turning here. And I am tracking the magenta line. And my next waypoint is in 9.7 miles Mado, which would be here. And let's see, let's turn weather on. Sure, we don't run into it to any weather. I see very little weather on the flo four flight app, but there is the propensity f to get some pop up weather that I may want to avoid. Okay, in 15.5, I do believe as I cruise. So this is not going to apply. Landing lights did come off after 10. Oxygen valve needs to become open. And let's get that done. Don't want to pass out up here. Uh, engine parameters. Uh, let's check, make sure they're all green. Um, and they all are green. I don't see anything that's not all right. And de-icing is required. Uh, minus one on the outside air temperature. No, I'm not really going through clouds, so I probably don't need any de-icing. But if I got some wind shear heat, it's always a good thing to turn that on. And let's see, wind shear heat, so that's that can come on. And pito heat is on, okay. So yeah. All right. And I'm in cruise now, so propeller needs to be between 15 and 17, check. And torque less than 100%, power adjust to whatever I want. So, so we will set our torque at about 95. ITT should be less than 760. So we are gonna be ITT limited. So we're gonna pull that down to seven. to 
750, I think we should be okay at about 750. All right. So we pull it back. All right. ITT is at 750, which is less than 760. NG is less than 101%. So yeah, we're good. Ore pressure is in the green and it's reading 114, which is within the parameters. Or temperature is Or temperature is 54 degrees Celsius, which is within parameters between 10 and 110. And pedo heat is on. Air conditioner adjusts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all breakers are pushed in. No breaker pop. Engine parameters are green. Check. And that completes our cruise checklist. And we will try to remember to bring it back up on descent. All right, so we got traffic out there. And that guy was really hard to see. Um, I want to see him without the label. Yeah, I don't see him. All right, and I did that on purpose. The, the autopilot should fix us. Or we may oscillate like crazy for a while. All right, so we'll probably have to do some work on that ourselves to stop the oscillation. rid of this guy and coming up on our what we did we running through these uh, waypoints I got a little thunderstorm over over that way somewhere. And at least I see it on the four flight app. Don't see it on the um don't really see it on the next ride. Okay, so we're cruising at 200 indicated and are close to it, actually 250 or 247 and a half to be exact. True air speed is 300 knots and we're over the ground at 324. And since we are VFR, even though we we did foul a flight plan, so we can always have a tower pick it up and make it IFR. But we should get to our destination in less than an hour. Man, it take me five to seven hours, well, six to seven hours to drive from Chattanooga to RDU. 
and I do know that because that's a trip that I've taken multiple times by car. All right. So, I am going to be quiet and speed things up. Enjoy. Okay, so I should already be descending if I want 3,000 at liberty. So I am going to descend a lot faster than I got. So let me pour this power way out here. We'll do a super fast descent. I'm 50. I got a deviation of 5,500 5, feet. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's get this guy down to about 2,500. See if we can't cut that. I'm not going to make Liberty at 31, I don't think. But it's at, it's actually uh, 3,100 or above, so not be above. And just to show you. So I'm basically here, and you can see where Liberty is right there at the intersection. And let's start thinking about an, an approach. So let's get out our ATAS for our for Raleigh Durham. But as you can see, I am getting, I am cutting down on the distance between the two. Um, cut my deviation down to roughly 3,000, 3,200. I got ortho um, installed for most of the southeastern United States. So that's why you can see buildings below us and whatnot. Anybody who fly real life make of where that looks fairly realistic enough. I'm glad pressurization is handled automatically in this aircraft. And system fuel flow fuel. 
electrical. I'm trying to see if I see any pressurization information. And I don't. But like I said in another video that Arabas took some liberties with the G1000, which is why they renamed it to the X1000. All right, so I'm within 500 feet. Might make liberty at, at 30, at roughly, at about the right out to after all. See some of hit vertical nav here. So So I didn't do my descent checklist. Okay, so I can close the oxygen valve. And that guy is right here. Alright. And let's see if we can get eight us now. Should be close enough. Raleigh Durham ITL information tango. Tango. 1900 similar weather. Wind 150 and 6. Visibility more than 10. Sky conditions 5500 scattered. 9500 broken. 25000 broken. Temperature 32. 2.19. Altimeter 3006. Arriving runways 23 right. 3 left. Departing runways 23 right. 23 left. Advise on initial contact you have tango. Alright. So, let's get this set. A timeter is 3006. Raleigh Durham INTL information tango. 19. Look for an approach. And we want two, three right. I think we'll do an I, I L S. I mean, a. a um, and we do vectors. And minimal, let's see, minimums, minimums. Um, I think that was 11, 20, no, I don't remember what the minimums are. Heading. Give us um, one two zero on a heading. All right. So 
So, shit. Can't quite see the airport, I don't think. Still a little bit too far away, I guess so. I'm still, what am I, eight nautical miles from the airport? Should be just get a, a glimpse of it. I don't know. This might be it. Ah, shoot. This might be it here. Yeah, that's it. All right, so the airport's there. And I'm at 2,100 feet. Change this to 3,009. Approach speed 180 indicated, power adjust, fuel auto select. Oh man, I should be way off balance on my fuel because I never did turn auto select on. All right. So we'll land on this right tank. That's going to be my fullest tank. I turn minimum zone to see the the it feel is at four four twenty or four forty um four thirty five six thirty five so let's make the minimum six eighty uh, there are published minimums but but for this, uh, and I would be out of minimums long before I get to um, 2680.
Uh, well, we're not going to do minimums. Um, I guess I got time to fix it. Um, so, is there a way to get in here? that I know is the way to do it this way. Mm, nothing is working. Alright, enter. Back this. And I'm not sure what's going on. Enter, enter, there we go. Six eight is good. Enter. And let's go ahead and load this up. Get it. Alright, twenty two hundred feet at at Preston. to zero nine zero. translucent one up and that would be Raleigh uh, would it be no that would be Durham no nope. see Durham would be up in here um, Raleigh would be over here that would that's got to be Durham though Those I don't think there are any other place in this area that have buildings that tall. Hmm. I don't know. And unlike Flight Simulator, Microsoft Flight Simulator, um, what's accurate in the in X plane would be the mesh and the streets, but everything else is autogen. So the buildings are not representative whatsoever. So um, it's virtually impossible to do in the palatage with any degree of accuracy, but You know, I try anyway, sometimes and stuff like this, you know, you can do palatage if you know the area and know where these things are. Um, so anyway, check my health, check my speed, 166, and speed up just a touch. I'm going about 180 for approach. Then let's go ahead and turn to zero five zero.
Raleigh Tower Epic 410 Lima Tango is about seven miles to the south inbound for a stop for runway three to right. Enter right base for two three right four one zero Lima Tango um, request. I request that um, that I shoot the IL at the ILS for runway two three from um, from Preston. Clear this file. Proceed to Preston. Expect runway two three right. Four one zero Lima Tango. Okay. happen don't tell me pause pause oh man what the devil happened okay I had a failure so I now I got a fuel imbalance but my fuel should be coming more into balance. See, I'm on my right tank. Oh man, I'm on my left tank. Oh shoot. I should be on my right tank, I think. Alright. And I think that might be why I'm in a spin. Alright, so Let's come out see if we can't recover. Five hundred. And don't look like I'm gonna be able to recover. <laughs> Whoa. Definitely ain't gonna be able to recover from that. Not survivable. That sucks. All right. So, what can I do? Okay, so whatever's going around, going on, is not due to weight and balance. So, we got a failure somewhere. Let's see if we can find out what the failure is and fix it. Um, shoot. After a long flight, get where you're going to want to go and then have something catastrophic fail that I can't really recover from. Autopilot's fun. Controls. Roll control failed. Always working, so let's fix that. And apply before we do that. Yeah, apply. Alright, so how 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 what altitude are we at? Uh, we are down to a thousand feet. 
So let's slow it back up to I slow it up to 2200 feet and see if we can't recover. All right. All right. And autopilot. All right. Let me get back and see what's going on. I'm at 2,700 feet. Sink rate. Sink rate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Over speed. Much too fast for the airspace I'm in. And I need to be headed toward Preston. So let's go ahead and activate this leg. Activate leg. Enter. And go to nav. So should be going directly to Preston now. Alright, speed's coming down. And I want about 180. I think I'm about three miles from Preston. Whew. That was close. Because I hate to get that close and, and lose this flight. All right. Uh, so landing lights can come on. Let's do a checklist. Okay. Landing lights on. Um, and I'm not ready for flaps yet. <laughs> And let's check my breakers. All right. So I'm turning towards bodily. And no glide slope yet. You know what? I actually wanted two three left. Okay, I take two three right and just cross over. Um, I should have. Okay. Um, so, flap saw breaker headset. Okay, fine. All right. I don't understand this headset equipment remove. my airport right here. And I am going to hand fly. Uh, I want the glide slope. Okay. So now I go to, to nav and I actually want to turn the head approach. And yeah, now I'm on the, that turns on my localizer. Give me some flaps. Perk speed. All right, landing. 
Capitano. So. And I'm not understanding why I'm not capturing the glide slope. Um, approach. All right. Turn this. Turn that autopilot off. Flaps four. Now, the autopilot is screwing me up. How do I see? How do I get turn it off completely? This would definitely be a go around. One mile final runway two three right. And I got my my yoke push almost full forward. Trying to get her down. Five hundred. Transition and let her bleed off some speed here. Devil. What the heck was that about? I don't know. Get my props still turning. And Did I have a strike or something? Oh man, don't tell me I ain't lip. I ain't put my landing gear on down. <laughs> okay. No landing gear. Too late now, right? <laughs> So that's what happened. And all right, let's go back and look at that. I'm embarrassed and upset because because that may, but well that would have been a. That should have been a go around anyway. <laughs> that should have been a go around anyway, but you see. if I had a landing gear failure. No, I just didn't put it down. I'm on that on this runway like it's water. All right. So, <laughs> That was uh, interesting.
and up in here is where it started started getting a road control error and thank God for pause and I was able to reset some stuff before I actually hit the uh, hit the ground otherwise the flight would have ended so guys you saw that for yourself and I'm not going to let make you go through that landing again. I can't believe I didn't lower the, the landing gear. And the sad part about it is I call myself following a checklist. Um, let me just open up the checklist and see where I missed it. Um, approach. Okay, so landing lights, landing gear, and here I, I look for speed. In fact, since I was so fast, I was concentrating on slowing down and I didn't go through any of these checks and that cost me dearly. It did. All right. So, thanks for flying with me, and hopefully, um, your injuries, for those of you who are on board, your injuries are not too significant. And until next time. Y'all come back now, dear.